If you think that you are skinny fat and this is something you want to fix, congratulations, you have found the absolute best video that will help you. Not only is it possible to fix being skinny fat, you can actually do it pretty fast. And don't worry, I have chapters in this video to help you out. You can skip around and get exactly the information you need, but I do recommend watching the whole video through from beginning to end so that you get all the information. My name is Kola, I am a certified personal trainer and nutritionist, and you are watching Koboko Fitness. Make sure you hit subscribe right now because I'm going to do so many educational videos just like this one and I don't want you to miss anything that will help you on your fitness journey. Here's what a skinny fat person looks like. Looking at these photos, you can see that a skinny fat person usually doesn't have any visible muscle definition. You can also see that there's a little bit of belly fat, maybe some love handles. Typically you would see skinny arms, skinny legs, sometimes not even skinny arms and skinny legs. It might be average size arms and legs, but definitely no muscle definition definition there, no visible quad definition, the booty is usually not really rounded, and definitely usually no abs. There's usually some thigh fat, some cellulite, and people like that tend to want to transform into a more toned physique with a rounder butt, more ab definition, more arm definition. Some people even want more defined backs with less back fat. But let me tell you something. Do you know what else skinny fat people tend to have? They tend to have jobs, things to do, bills to pay, classes to attend, families to take care of. Listen, I want to really stress and emphasize that if you desire to change your physique, that is fine. But also understand that you're a human being with actual real life responsibilities. Most people that are skinny fat are not Instagram models. It is not their job to be exercising and measuring chicken breast every day. And as a result, it's very difficult to maintain the level of dedication needed to achieve that physique. I don't say any of that to discourage you. I'm just trying to emphasize that being skinny fat is not a bad thing if you are healthy because at the end of the day, health is the number one thing. It is entirely possible to be skinny fat and also healthy. So if you are healthy and happy, ain't no shame in your game. Live, live life. If you're getting messages from social media, from TV, from the internet, telling you that you have to look a certain way, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. I'm gonna help you, but you need to chill a little bit. I want you to understand that this video is not here to make anyone feel bad. But also I want you to know that this can be done from a place of self-love and self-respect and not from a place of not loving what your body looks like if your body's already healthy. Anyone that's meeting the recommendation of 30 minutes of cardio five days a week and two days of resistance training during the week is doing better than 85% of people. And there are some people meeting those requirements, but they still don't feel that great in their bodies. So I'll talk about how to fix being skinny fat and how not to fix it. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to share basically some mistakes to avoid if you're trying to not be skinny fat anymore. I'll also share some of my personal experience later on in the video because I have personal experience with this, but I don't want this whole video to be all about me and my personal experience. I wanna make sure I'm giving you the best information possible. So when you're done watching this video, you know exactly what to do to go from being skinny fat to being toned, strong, and looking the way you want to look. So how to fix, fix being skinny fat. Follow a training plan. Go to kabokofitness.com and start your free trial today. I'll come back to exercise in a moment and tell you more specific things to do, but at least get a good training plan and follow it. Number two, eat 300 calories less than your maintenance calories daily. Now, this is one of those details I mentioned earlier on in the video where you might get the big overall picture of what I'm talking about, but then miss some little details. This is one of those details I really want to draw your attention to so you don't miss it. This is very important. I did not say 300 calories less than what you're currently eating because some of y'all are actually starving. Some of y'all are actually very hungry because you're not eating enough. You eating goldfish, crackers, salad, and soup, and that's it. And yet also working full time, taking a full load of classes. Some of y'all are chasing kids around. I don't even know how that's physically possible, but this is a thing that is happening. So I didn't say 300 calories less than what you're currently eating. It's 300 calories less than your maintenance calories, which obviously begs the question, what are maintenance calories? Maintenance calories is the amount of calories you need to eat 
per day to maintain your body at a particular weight. There are many calculators online you can use to figure out your maintenance calories. Those calculators will typically ask you for your age, your height, your gender, and your activity level, and then they will tell you how many calories will be required to maintain your current weight. If you don't want to do all of that, there is a very simple way to estimate your maintenance calories, and that is to just multiply your current weight by 13 or 14 pounds. So for example, if you currently weigh 120 pounds and you want to maintain at 120 20 pounds, you want to eat roughly 1700 calories per day. This is not perfect. It's just an approximation, but that's a general rule of thumb to quickly calculate your maintenance calories. And once you know your maintenance calories, then you want to eat 300 calories less than that per day. So if your maintenance calories is 1700 calories, but right now you're eating only 800 calories, I want to be really clear. I'm not telling you to go eat 500 calories a day. You actually need to eat a little bit more because here's the thing. A lot of people think that if they see fat on their body, and they want to get rid of that fat, what they need to do is to eat less and do more cardio. This is a very interesting dilemma, especially for women, because we naturally tend to carry more body fat than other genders. So, because we generally tend to carry more fat than men. Whenever we get into that mental space where we think that we need to eat less and do a lot of cardio, what tends to happen is the hormones start to mess everything up. Our hormones are the chemical messengers in the body. They signal all sorts of stuff. And they will signal that you are in crisis. When the body is not well fueled with food, it's a crisis as far as the body is concerned and the hormones will go haywire. They will sabotage all efforts. This is when people start having metabolic damage. This is when people start losing their periods. This is when bad things start to happen. Next, you want to replace some of the carbs in your diet with protein. You can also replace some of the fat in your diet with protein, but it's a little bit easier to just replace the carbs with protein. Not all the carbs, just some, because I like carbs. Don't take my carbs from me. <laughs> Literally just take out some of the carbs and replace it with some protein and you're gonna be good to go. For example, if you're a person that loves burgers and you just love that thick delectable bun, something you could simply do is take off one piece of the bun and, and add a little bit more meat or a little bit more chicken or you can add maybe bacon if you want to or you can add something healthier like egg whites, just replace some of the carbs with some protein. In general, try to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you wanna be aiming for 120 grams of protein per day. The reason I recommend one gram of protein per pound of body weight is because this is a number that has been thoroughly researched and studied and been shown to be extremely effective for the purpose of adding muscle to the body. I'll talk about gaining muscle and why that's important for the purpose of transitioning from being skinny fat to being more toned in just a second, a lot of people can't actually hit that number of eating one gram per pound of body weight. I know. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you straight up. It's very, very hard to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, especially if you're not used to it. It's actually quite difficult to do in day-to-day -day life because all you need is to go to work or go meet, visit a friend and they have some cupcakes and there goes your whole plan. So if you aim for one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you don't hit that one gram, you will probably at least hit 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 grams per pound of your body weight, which is still great and that would still help you. But if you didn't have that goal in the first place, you will fall so far short of your protein goals that you're not going to see results. Again, this is another one of those details I kind of hinted at at the beginning of the video. You would think, why would I set a goal if I know I can't reach it? It's because, especially in my experience as a personal trainer and nutritionist, I have noticed that when people have those types of goals, they do better than if they didn't have them at all. So I definitely recommend having that as a goal. Now you're probably wondering, how can you make sure that you're actually getting this amount of protein? The best way you can do this is to measure the amount of protein you're eating eating for about three to seven days. This will teach you what this quantity of protein looks like. Do not try to guess. Do not try to go off of your memory. This is not one of those situations where you can just go with what you feel is correct. There's no need to get super obsessive about it. There's no reason to do this for more than a week. This is purely just to teach you what it looks like. So you can get a good sense of it and you can make sure you're eating the right amount. If you want to stop being skinny fat and be more toned and have more more definition in your body, in your arms, your abs, and your butt. I did personally go through that experience of trying to eat more protein and trying to hit that one gram per pound of body weight in my journey.
journey. And it was during that period that I purchased an Amazon Basics food scale. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive. I don't remember how much it costs, but you can get the scale. It came with a battery. I didn't have to replace that battery for maybe two years and it's fantastic. So I definitely recommend just getting something really cheap like that to teach you what one gram of protein looks like. You don't really have to measure the rest of your food if you don't want to, but definitely try to make an effort to measure that protein for at least three to seven days. And later on in this video, I'll kind of explain to you why I'm not emphasizing measuring the rest of your food and I'm really just focusing on really emphasizing that protein and asking you to measure that for a few days. As long as you're eating the right amount of calories based on my previous point where we talked about 300 calories less than your maintenance and you're eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you can't go wrong with your food. Going back to exercise, if your goal is to stop being skinny fat, you cannot escape exercise. It is unavoidable. If you have bought into the lie that all this stuff is 80% diet, 20% exercise, welcome to Koboko Fitness, where we believe it is 100% diet, 100% exercise. The mindset of 80% this, 20% that is part of what leads people down this unhealthy path where they try to restrict calories, try to control their food, Food and it doesn't work. If you are doing this for the short term, maybe only two days or five days, then you can do the whole 80% diet, 20% exercise mindset. But if you're doing this for life, if you're doing this because you want to be a hot grandma, if you're doing this because you want to have full mobility in your body, you want to feel amazing in your body, you really need to transition into a mindset where it is 100 commitment to doing your best with your nutrition and 100% commitment to doing your best with exercise. This is particularly true for this group of people that are dealing with being skinny fat. For this particular group, exercise is unavoidable. This is not a thing that can be worked on or changed by controlling diet alone. It doesn't work that way. Exercise is going to be a very important part of the process. You're going to understand more of why in just a second. Now, make sure you are following a good plan. Do not follow a bad plan because it will waste your time. It will leave you feeling defeated and you're going to think that there is something wrong with you when there is nothing wrong with you. You just followed a bad plan. One of the red flags that you will know if a plan is not a great plan is if there is no mention of progressive overload. Progressive overload is basically when you start training at a certain level of difficulty and you gradually increase the difficulty level of your workouts and the volume of your workouts over time until you reach your results. And then when you get to your results, you're going to need some kind of maintenance plan to keep the results that you have worked for. There are so many ways to do progressive overload. It can be done by using harder resistance bands. It can be done by using heavier weights. It can be done by doing slower reps with body weight exercises. There are many different ways to achieve progressive overload. So there's just, it's not just one method, but whatever method it's being used, the core concept there is progressive overload has got to be in the building. So fitness is not something where you work hard for two, three days or two months even, get results and then you're set for life. It's more of a thing where you work hard for a certain period of time and then you maintain your results. It's kind of like making money. You work really hard for a certain amount of time and then if you have good advisors, they will teach you how to maintain so that you don't have to work as hard. That was so unrelated, but in my mind it made sense and I know it makes sense to somebody else watching this video. There's at least one person that sees what I saw, understands what I said just now. If you want to use Kaboko Fitness as your training program to achieve results, I would recommend starting off with the booty program. That gives you a very clear, focused, structured place to start from. And then once you're done with the booty program, which you will have lifetime access to, then you can get into the monthly workout schedules that will help you get more definition in other areas of your body and also maintain your results. So you don't lose all the things you've worked hard for. So if you haven't done so already, definitely go on my website, kabokofitness.com, start your free trial and see if it's right for you. Now, obviously, Koboko Fitness programs are not the only way to get these results. You can also get great results by going to the gym. So I'm going to help you out with that as well in this video. 
If you're going to go to the gym, there are some basic options that are the bare minimum that you have to do. You have to hit the squats, you have to hit the deadlifts, and you definitely should think about doing the chest press and do the ab machines as well. There are a lot of trainers that will tell you, oh, you need to train abs, abs are made in the kitchen, and stuff like that. Those are the trainers that you can just tell that they are genetically blessed with abs. There are some people that are just born that way where they don't store fat on their belly. You can usually tell when you look at them. Those people would tend to store fat on their backs instead. If you're a skinny fat person, chances are you are like me and you may need to work a little bit harder for those abs. So hit the ab machines a little bit here and there and it will help with getting more tone in your mid section. Those are the minimum foundation basics. You really want to make sure you're hitting if you are going to be doing this at the gym. Now, in addition to that, there are some other little things here and there that you can do at the gym that will really help your results. And one of those things is the hip abductor machine. That's the one you sit on and you do your leg like this and you hope your crush isn't walking past as you're doing it. Yeah, that machine, that's the one. This hits the hips area. So if you're a person that's concerned with hip dips or you just want a stronger, rounder hip area, then definitely hit that hip abductor machine. If you're doing my workouts, you might see crab walks in there. That exercise does the same thing. It's amazing. You can also do clams, sideline clams. That's another way to hit the hip abductors. And that stuff looks like you're not doing much, but it burns. While you're at the gym, I would also recommend doing some back exercises in there because you're relaxed are very big muscles in the body. And if you can build those up as well, it helps. I know most of us don't care about our back muscles, but listen, if you are dealing with being skinny fat, the more larger muscles you can build and grow and develop, the better. I'll explain why in just a second. And I know I keep saying I'll explain why in just a second. You'll see why later on in the video. And the reason is because I'm trying to keep this video really organized and some points just fit better with others. So stick with me and keep on watching. Some warnings I want to give you about the gym though, because I think it's very important for me to be responsible about telling anybody to go to the gym because I have seen some things happen at the gym that I don't want to happen to you. And I'm not going to say anything to scare you, but I do want you to understand that <sighs> the gym is not a toy. <laughs> There are a few things you really need to pay attention to if you're choosing to go to the gym. One thing is mobility, especially in your ankles. If you're going to be doing squats and deadlifts, you gotta have that ankle mobility to make sure that you're not stressing your joints. If you're of West African origin or you have people in your family of West African origin, there are chances that you may have flat feet. And if you have flat feet, that produces some important challenges to your ankles. So you might want to talk to a podiatrist about that. You might want to do your research and make sure that you are aware proper footwear to support your unique foot. So make sure that you're really doing mobility exercises for your ankles. Heel presses are great. You can do that right now as you're watching this video. You don't need any equipment to do that. Just roll your ankles all the way in nice big circles clockwise and anti-clockwise. Also, something else to think about is the strength and mobility of your hips. This is an area that's very tight for a lot of people just from sitting a lot. So you really wanna make sure that you're doing enough stretches for your ankles and your hips. There are so many stretches you can do for your hips to get them nice and mobile. You can do a quarter stretch. That one is really good. A butterfly stretch is good as well. A forward fold is wonderful. Glute stretches are great. Hip stretches are fantastic. So just doing the right stretches to really get those hips nice and movable so that you're not stressing them when you're doing these heavy lifts at the gym. Something else to make sure of before jumping into really heavy lifts in the gym is to just make sure of that you have really good strength, especially in your back and in your legs. And the way to build basic strength is by doing body weight exercises and mastering those before adding weights at the gym. So I personally really love a good back stretch. I do a back stretch at least three to four times a week before I go to bed. I used to have back pain right after I gave birth. I suffered from back pain. And ever since I started taking care and paying attention to these things, I don't have pain in my body. So these are the kinds of little hacks I just really love sharing with you to help you out. So make sure you have that basic strength, especially in your back and in your legs before hitting the gym. 
if that's the route you choose to go. Also, if you're going to be doing stuff at the gym, make sure that you're warming up. Please don't go under a squat rack without a proper warm up first. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. You can do body weight squats to warm the body up. You can do squats with just an empty bar, and then you can do squats with light weights. These are all different ways to warm up before doing squats in the gym with heavy weights. I just think it's very, very important to prevent injury because a lot of people don't see results from doing their workouts. And one of the reasons is because they keep getting injured. And so they have to take all these long breaks. And I could tell you from personal experience that taking long breaks from exercise is okay when it's needed. And also it's very difficult to come back into a regular fitness routine after a really long break because you just have other things going on. The next thing you need to do if you're trying to stop being skinny fat and be more toned, have that popping booty and just be on your A game is you need to schedule 30 minutes into your schedule on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays for your workouts and also schedule 90 minutes on Sundays to prep your protein. And I say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because I'm assuming you're doing my booty fix program. But if you're not doing that program, whatever program you're doing, just schedule it into your calendar. If you have a premium subscription with Kaboko Fitness, you actually get something every month that automatically schedules workouts into your calendar for you. That's how serious this is. If it's not on your schedule, it's not going to get done. If you're a person that uses a physical planner, pencil it into your planner so that it gets done. And when you're doing your meal prep, focus on prepping your protein. Carbs are very easy to come by. Fat is very, very easy to get, but healthy lean protein that will get you towards your goal tends to be a little bit more difficult to find. And it's a little bit more difficult to improvise on the fly if you don't already have it done. And also protein is very easy to keep. So you may not even need to protein prep every single week. You might only protein prep twice a month and you just have a ton of protein just ready to go. And you're just going to be there like, ah, <laughs> consuming protein and on your way to your goals. I recommend Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because Monday tends to be a day where a lot of us are super motivated and like to do our workouts. Wednesdays, we can usually convince ourselves to do it. And Fridays, if you're really motivated, you can just be like, it's almost the weekend anyway, let me just get it in. So just psychologically, Monday, Wednesday, Friday seems to work really well for a lot of people, but there is no hard and fast rule that says those are the days you should work out. You can schedule whatever days work best for you. Those are just great starting points for you to experiment from and then make adjustments according to your lifestyle and what works for you. Also, same logic goes for Sundays. Sundays seem to be the day that work best for most people to do whatever preparation they're going to do for the week. But if a different day works for you, do what works for you. Just make sure it is scheduled. If it doesn't get scheduled, it will not get done. And you have to actually do it. Otherwise, I mentioned that this is something that you're going to be able to do fast. And when I say you're going to be able to do this fast, I'm making some assumptions here. I'm making the assumption that you're not a person that has a ton of training experience and is already ripped. I'm assuming you've done a few workouts here and there, or you started a program, but didn't really like have a way to do it all the way through. And you're definitely not somebody that's going to the gym every day kind of person. If you fall into that general description, you can expect to see results much faster than somebody that has a ton of experience training and a ton of experience lifting weight and doing all these exercises and doing all this stuff because your body is going to be shocked when you start doing all these things and it will adapt a little bit faster. And that's one benefit of actually starting something new like this, like your personal journey into being whatever it is you wanna be, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. That was not part of the video, but we're here now. And then what? <laughs> now you're probably wondering, how long exactly does it take to see results? The amount of time it takes to see results really depends heavily on your starting point. It depends on how hard you're working, but I'll give you specific numbers later on in this video. And the reason why I'm saving that for later on in the video is because I feel like it might be something that will put me in a bad mood to talk about that. Because I've seen some extreme claims being made on the internet where people say you can get certain results in like two days or five days or something like that. And I don't want to be in a bad mood in this video. So let's talk about that later on. Let's just procrastinate a little bit and talk about that later on in the video. And But regardless of how long it takes you to see results, whether it takes two minutes or it takes two months, one thing that absolutely everybody needs to be doing on this journey is tracking progress. 
track your progress in the way that works for you. Some people like to track their progress with their clothes. Some people like to track their progress with pictures. Some people like numbers. So they like to track their progress with a bathroom scale. Some people like to use skin fold calipers, whatever works for you. There is no one perfect right way to track your progress. If you have a healthy relationship with numbers, you can track your progress with numbers. If you have a healthy relationship with photos, you can track your progress with photos. Do the thing that feels right to you. In case you're not aware, skin fold calipers are a very effective way to check your body fat percentage. You basically just clip it on a little bit of skin in the belly area and compare the number you see on the calipers to a chart. And that would tell you roughly your body fat percentage. Generally speaking, if you're skinny fat, you want to see your body fat percentage go down. Something that happens is that you're working hard, changes are happening, but you're not feeling it. And then you start to feel discouraged. When I first started working out, I couldn't do one push up on my knees. That's how weak I was. And when I started working on my strength, I would write down how many reps I could do in 30 seconds. And I could just see myself being able to do more and just writing it down and seeing the improvement every week was very, very motivating to me. I wasn't seeing anything in the mirror as far as like my chest strength or anything like that. But I was seeing that, oh my goodness, I could do one full push up. Oh my goodness, I can do five push-ups. Wow, I just did 15 push-ups, like, and up to the point where I could do 100 push-ups, and it was just, like, mind-blowing to me. So that's a very, very effective way to encourage yourself. Something I said I was going to talk about later on in this video is the issue of why I'm talking about gaining muscle in a video about being skinny fat. And the reason for that is your resting BMR. Resting BMR is your resting basal metabolic rate. Basically, what you need to understand is that 60 to 70% of the calories that we burn is just from things like watching TV, sleeping, looking outside the window, scrolling on TikTok, our hearts beating, the lungs pumping, the nerves doing their thing. That is what burns the majority of the calories in our bodies. And to increase the amount of calories that you burn while resting, while sleeping, while watching TV, the way you do that is by simply having more muscle on your body. So if you have two people who weigh exactly the same, they're both 150 pounds, but one person has 45% body fat percentage and the other person has 18% body fat percentage. The person with 18% body fat percentage is burning more calories while sitting down watching TV than the person with the higher body fat percentage. They're doing exactly the same activity. They weigh exactly the same amount, but the person with the lower body fat percentage is burning more calories. It's kind of amazing. So again, it goes back to my analogy of working hard in the beginning and then reaping the benefits later on. That person that has that 18% body fat percentage worked very hard to get there. And now they can sit down and just be burning calories. And it's easier to maintain those results than it is to get them. So once you get it, yes, you have to work to maintain it, but it's less work than it takes to get it. So your overall strategy of all these tactics I've shared in this video is to try to gain more muscle while losing fat or at least minimizing fat gain in the process, which is not an easy thing to do, but it can be done if you follow the instructions I've given you in this video. I also promise to tell you what not to do, basically mistakes to avoid in the process of trying to not be skinny fat anymore. And the very first thing I want to really emphasize is please, uh, do not make the mistake of going on a diet or severely restricting calories in an effort to get even skinnier. It makes logical sense to try to do that because when a person is skinny fat, you can kind of look in the mirror and see the belly fat or the love handles and be like, I just need to lose a little bit of weight and then this fat will go away. It doesn't work like that. There's this little thing called hormones that just step in and ruin everything. So remember what I said about 300 calories earlier on in the video? As long as you're following that rule of eating 300 calories less than maintenance, you're going to be fine. And there's no reason to fear gaining weight. You will be eating just the right amount for your goal. Another mistake is being afraid of gaining weight. I see this so much. I get it because you might think once you gain that weight, it's going to be difficult to lose. And let me be honest with you, that's not entirely illogical. That actually is kind of the way it is, but it can become unhealthy to be very afraid of gaining weight. Gaining weight, losing weight is a normal cycle of life. It happens to all of us. Sometimes we go up, sometimes we come down. It's all good. So that fear of gaining weight is something to be aware of. When I said eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, it might have triggered 
that fear of gaining weight, let me just assure you right now, it's very hard to overeat protein. If you're eating lean protein, it's very hard to overeat protein. It is so satiating. You will feel so full. And so don't be afraid of adding lean protein to your diet. It's not going to make you gain weight, especially if you do it the way I explained in this video, where you're just taking out some of the carbs and adding in the lean protein instead. Another mistake to be very careful of is the mistake of tracking the wrong thing. So if you're trying to stop being skinny fat, but you're only tracking your weight on the scale, it's very easy to get misled into thinking that you're not making progress. It's possible to become misled because you might be getting lean and you're packing on muscle and your body is transforming into the way you want it to look. But in the process, it might be a slightly higher number on the scale, which can freak some people out. So if you're going to lose that skinny fat look, make sure you're tracking the right thing. Tracking your weight is not bad, but I wouldn't recommend only tracking your weight. You want to also be tracking how you look, how you feel, your body fat percentage, those are also valid things to track. So just make sure you're tracking the right thing. If you're hyper-focused on your weight on the scale alone and you have this unhealthy relationship with the scale, then tracking your weight is probably not the right thing for you to track. Only you will know. What is the thing that makes you like anxious and stressed? Whatever that is, that's not the right thing. I do want to talk to you a little bit about my personal story, but before that, let me just tell you real quick, don't fall into the trap of doing only cardio and sit-ups and crunches. This is another thing that I've noticed where people think that if they just do enough cardio and enough sit-ups and crunches, they're going to get the look that they want. And the body doesn't work that way. Listen, if you're trying to have a resting metabolic rate that's really high where you're burning a lot of calories while sitting down, it's not going to come from just doing cardio and a few sit-ups and crunches. When we're doing sit-ups and crunches, we're working the very surface level of the abs, which is a nice muscle to work, but compared to other bigger muscles in the body, like the lats in the back or the quads in the thighs or the hamstrings in the back of the thigh, that's a very small muscle to work. So yes, we want to work that muscle, but if we're only working that muscle, it's it's not going to be enough to transform the skinny fat look that we're trying to do. You might be like, no, if only my belly was just more toned, I'll be happy still. The body is a unit. It all works together. And I know it sounds so crazy. If you just want to have toned abs, why can't you just do only sit-ups and crunches? I, I was about to speak Spanish, but no habla espanol. It doesn't work that way. For me personally, the 2020, 2021 years were very challenging. I started off that period going really strong with my workouts. I was even really encouraging everyone to keep going with their workouts, to do their best, to try to just, you know, just do the, make the best of the situation and everything. But eventually the stress got to me and I was not able to maintain the same level of physical activity and I really had to tone it down. I actually got to a point where I couldn't even do a lot of things, like a lot of my own normal workouts and all I could do was just walk. That was literally the only thing I could physically do. And even though I'm so grateful to my body that I could even do that during that period, I did start to notice that I was getting that skinny fat look I noticed the belly fat was coming the back fat was coming like the muscle definition wasn't defining the way it was supposed to or the way I was used to so I started to get that look and for me personally it was very important to just allow it to not panic to not freak out to not be worried that oh my body's going to look a certain way if I'm not working out and just respond to what my body was telling me which is I just needed to power down and I needed to rest and I needed to just chill. Our bodies aren't just these things for people to just look at for their own pleasure. As long as the body is healthy, you're doing okay. And for me at the time, the healthy thing was to just chill out and just walk. Walk outside, walk inside. If it's cold outside, just keep moving. And then at some point I got a little impatient and I tried to go hard with my workouts and I went and I tried to do like a regular workout and I got sick instantly. <laughs> It wasn't the C word, but immediately I knew that I'm, I'm not ready. So I took more time and just continued to walk when I could. And there were some days I couldn't even walk. Take what you want out of my story, but at minimum, I hope that it encourages you to just embrace your body in whatever stage it's in and with whatever capacity it can currently handle. Going right back to what not to do, don't take all the fun out of it. Have fun. 
have fun with it. Fun is kind of important because if you're not having fun, you're not going to stick with it. And if you can't stick with it, you're not going to get results from it. And if you don't get results from it, you still won't be skinny fat. And then don't say I didn't try because I tried my best in this video. I already kind of mentioned this before, but don't be random. Don't just be doing random workouts at random times. That does not work. It doesn't work that way. You need to have a clear structured plan, a structured program, a good training program from beginning to end that tells you exactly what to do so you know you're not doing the exercises wrong and you're doing the right exercises in the right order in the right amount so that's something else to be careful of i already said this earlier on in the video monday wednesday fridays for working out when you're just starting out Sundays for prepping your protein, especially. This is a very wonderful structure to work with that works well for a lot of people, but you don't have to do it exactly like that. You can adjust it, move things around till you find what, what works for you and your lifestyle. The thing to avoid though, is falling into the trap of thinking, I'll do it sometime. I'll do it at some point. I'll do it when I feel like it. That doesn't work. Take your time to figure out when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, so it can be something you stick to. But at the same time, don't kid yourself that you're just going to wake up one morning and like, you know, consistently go hard. Unfortunately, with the way life is and we're all so busy, it really helps to at least have it on your schedule, on your calendar. And every time I say that, there's a voice in my head telling me that, you know, some people don't have a schedule. <laughs> How about that? I don't know. I can't help you. <laughs> if you don't have, I can't help you. How? Teach me. That's what I would say. If you don't have a schedule and you are functioning and you are getting things done, teach me, teach free me, please. Because adulting is a scam. Adulting is a scam. I'm so over it. Can I be a kid? Actually, I don't want to be a kid. Being a kid is also a scam. So when I wanted to get back into a more structured workout routine after my experience, just being extremely stressed and unable to do my regular workouts, I took my time to decide when I could fit workouts back into my schedule because I wanted it to be something I could actually commit to so that once I was ready to do it, I was able to really start doing it. I'm still on my journey. We're always on a journey. It never really ends. And that's the fun of it. You just keep doing it. You keep going. So how long exactly does it take to see results? Part of me doesn't want to talk about this because I've seen some madness on the internet with people saying that they saw results in two days. I'm like, two days this? Really? Okay, give yourself eight to 12 weeks. Some of y'all will see results much sooner than that. Some of you will see results much later than that. But more important than how long it's taking you to see results is tracking the progress along the way because that's the thing that's going to encourage you to keep going and inform you about the adjustments to make in your process. As long as you're making progress from week to week, just keep going. I love you, you are blessed, you are amazing. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Visit kabokofitness.com and start your 10-day free trial today. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Also check out my website, kabokofitness.com. I have the most amazing workout programs that you can try for free. So visit kabokofitness.com and start your 10-day free trial today. My name is Cola. I'm a certified personal trainer, a nutritionist, and you are watching Koboko Fitness. I don't know why I did that, but that was just the thing in my spirit. It had to come out. Your maintenance calories is the amount of calories you need to eat. <laughs> with you, I'm so in love with you. I'm so in love, baby. I don't care what the people say. I'm so in love, baby. I don't care what the people say. Badu 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 bude dem bedem bodum. Who's gonna be the
Adios. Wait a second. Au revoir. Au double.